we got through an introduction to tags last time and, and what made up web pages. And to briefly review, uh, an HTML document is simply put uh, a, a plain text document. All right, so there's no special formatting characters embedded in it, you know, if that makes any sense to you. It's just a plain text document. And the way that you give meaning to different portions of text is by wrapping tags around the text. And that tells the browser what that tag means, and that translates to the way the browser is going to display it. All right? Now, there's, there's two things that influence the way the browser is going to display your web page and the tags that you have. And one of them is the defaults of the browser. Like, by default, an H1 tag is going to get displayed a certain way. By default, an H2 tag is going to get displayed a certain way, and so on down the line. There's another thing that affects it that we're not going to study quite yet. We'll probably pick it up next week or the week after. And that is CSS, Cascading Style Sheets, which is a language to describe how your page is going to look. So really, we're going to work on two different languages. And right now, we're just working on the one, HTML. And we're just letting the browser do its thing, all right, and display these pages according to the browser defaults. So most of your assignments, like, for example, for Lab 1, are going to look pretty much the same. There's going to be some headers. There's going to be some paragraphs. If you didn't read the text, it's really hard to tell one from another, all right? Later on, when we get into the CSS, then you'll be able to customize your page to make it look exactly the way you want it to. Right now, you're sort of at the mercy of the browser defaults, all right? And the browser defaults will dictate how it's going to look. So here's the example we had last time. Generally speaking, when I upload an example, I, I upload it as a zip file. A zip file is a compressed file. And it, that's probably the better way for you to turn in assignments as well. And if you're not sure how to create one, I can go over that with you in lab. All right, so I downloaded it. And if you look, the thing to remember is when you download a zip file, we can double click it and we can see the files that are inside it, but those files really aren't there. Those files are sort of wrapped up inside the zip file. So therefore, there's going to be problems when we get into web pages that contain multiple files. That is, web pages that use CSS and images and so on down, down the line, simply because uh, those files really aren't there. All right, Which means that if you pull down one of my examples, and it doesn't look right, there's a good chance maybe you didn't uncompress it or decompress it, all right, or extract it. So in this case, it's simple enough as just one page. It really wouldn't matter, but I do want to bring that up right off the bat. I've had students, like, be concerned because they've turned something in, and then when they look at their files, the web page doesn't look right. Well, they're looking at the files inside of the zip file, and therefore it's not going to look the way that it should. So I'm going to click Extract to extract the files. And you can extract it anywhere you want. And here we go. There is a folder called Winter Now that contains my file. If I double click on it, I'm going to view it within the web browser. Remember that we are going to look at web pages two different ways. Uh, every web page we, we develop, we're going to look at it two different ways. <coughs> we're going to look at it in a web browser. A web browser is something like Internet Explorer or Microsoft Edge or Firefox or Google Chrome or Safari or any number of different programs whose job it is is to display web pages. That is how the rest of the world will see your web page when it's completed and when you, if you were to publish it out on the web. So that's sort of the surface. That's a picture of how your web page is going to look to everyone else. Because we're going to be developing web pages, though, we need to see sort of the, the inner workings of them, all the nuts and bolts inside of them. And therefore, we're going to be looking at 
your pages through a text editor as well. And the one that I suggested last time was Notepad++, which is a free download. Uh, I'm not sure if it's available on Mac. If it's not, there are other, uh, other similar products that you can use. Um, Komodo is a, is a good editor that I use. Um, and there's other editors as well. If you download Lime, you can install Notepad++. Yeah, you, you can do that to run Windows programs on a Mac. Uh, that, that seems a, bit, a little overkill. Uh, but yeah, if, if you really, if you were really were set on Notepad++, you could you could run it that way. Um, anyhow, so we're going to go and edit it now. Double clicking will bring it up in the browser. To edit it, I'm going to right mouse, and if you have Notepad++ installed, you would say Edit with Notepad. And here you go. Now, if you did not have Notepad++ installed and you wanted to edit it in some other language or some other uh, application, you could say open with and you could pick, choose another app, and you could pick uh, just plain old notepad. There you go. And then it would open up in plain old notepad, which any Windows machine is going to have. Uh, notepad++, as the name implies, is just a little bit better than notepad because it gives you line numbers and things like that. Important thing to notice is if you save something from notepad, you need to go in and change it from any type of file, or from text document rather, to all files, and then save it with a .html extension. When you're all done, your file should end with a .html, all right? Which, if we look at our file here, it does end in .html. So whether you create it in Notepad++ or you create it in Notepad or any other editor, it needs to end in .html. There's several ways that a computer knows what to do with a file, all right? And one of the ways is based on what's called the file extension, which is the last characters after the, the period, all right? And in this case, .html indicates it's a web page. Uh, depending on how your machine is set up, if you're running Windows, sometimes it doesn't always show the .html. And if you go to View, file name extension should be checked. If it's not checked, it will just look like that. And that can be deceptive, all right? So I recommend any, uh, anyone uh, using Windows to show the file name extension so you know it, the exact name, so you precisely know the name, because you'll need that for creating links and other things. All right, um, if you have any problems with that, we can again review that in, in lab. The good news is, is if you do mess up and you save it with the wrong extension, you can correct it simply by renaming it. So don't think that you really you know, messed up severely if that's a problem. Anyhow, here we go. I'm going to open it up in Notepad++. And this is what we had so far. And notice a couple things. These are what are tags. All right, and that's a nice thing about Notepad++. Notice, because it knows this is an HTML file, if I highlight the start tag, it shows me the end tag too. All right, so that's nice to keep track of the tags and not get messed up as far as how they go. All right, so that's a nice feature in Notepad++. Now remember, there's exceptions to every rule. So if I say there always is an ending tag, take that with a grain of salt. There may be some cases where there isn't an ending tag. But notice in this example, anyhow, that for every start tag, there's an ending tag. They come in pairs. So start tag and the ending tag. Tags are formed by having the less than sign, the name of the tag, and then the greater than sign. The ending tag looks the same, except it has a slash before the name of the tag. So this is a start tag, this is an ending tag. Start tag, ending tag. Start tag, ending tag. And the meaning of the tag is everything between those tags is treated as being whatever the tag says it is. So this is an H1 which means top level heading, all right? 
Remember you have six headings, six levels of headings, H1 through H6, with H1 meaning the most important heading, H2 meaning the second most important, down the line through H6. Now again, that doesn't mean that you can only have six headings on a page. There's six levels of headings. All right, so you could have 50 headings on the page and three of them could be H1s and eight of them could be H2s and so on down the line. All right, so the number doesn't relate to the number of heading it is. It relates to the level, like if you were doing an outline. All right. Um, so the tags that we have in this example are H1s for top level heading, H2s, H, uh, and, and paragraphs. Really, the only two tag or three tags that we use in this example. All right. Notice that the tags don't overlap. We'll get into that uh, in a minute. All right. This is not necessarily the best example to show the nesting or overlapping of of tags. Now, I mentioned last time that this is not a complete web page. This is like a fragment of a web page. So let's go in now and let's finish this web page off. All right. And I'm going to put in some tags now that should be on every one of your web pages. So you can almost make a shell and save it. And every time you make a web page, start with the shell if you want to. And the first thing that we have is technically not a tag, but is what's called a declaration. So it sort of looks like a tag, but it has an exclamation point. That means it's a declaration. And this is the document type declaration. Now, <coughs> the purpose of this is to, to define specifically what version of HTML you are using. All right? Um, there are versions of HTML. And some of the rules have subtly changed for how certain things work and so on and so forth. So therefore, by properly identifying the version of HTML that you are using, your browser has the best shot of displaying your web page correctly. All right? So we're going to be using HTML5. Um, there are previous versions of HTML. Um, and there's different doc types for those. But So if you, if, you're, if you would get, like, let's say you'd get a job somewhere and you'd look at... Uh, their web page, their doc type might look a little different. Well, maybe it was written a long time ago prior to the use of HTML5. But the HTML, the doc type that I have shown there is for HTML5. So just put it at the top of, of the web page. And don't delete it. The next thing is an HTML tag. And the HTML tag again is another way to tell the browser, hey, this whole thing is our web page. All right. Notice the HTML tag goes around the entire contents of the page. It goes from top to bottom. So these tags, the tag is here, the start tag is here, the end tag is right after some content, tag, end tag. Here the start tag is here and the end tag is way down here. Tags can be nested. That's what it's called when you have tags inside of other tags. They're nested. Uh, and in this case, uh, everything is in the HTML tag. Think of the HTML tag like a big envelope that you're stuffing everything that the client is going to be receiving. These web pages live on a web server, and a client, so a person that's surfing the web, you know, types in the address of a website that they have. The web server finds that page and sends it to the client that requested it. Think of the HTML tag as being just a big uh, envelope that says, okay, here's everything you asked for, all right? Inside the HTML tag, there are two main sections. There's a head and there's a body. All right.
And it more or less goes like this. The body is everything that you want to see in the browser window. So everything that you want to see here is in the body. So if you want a heading to appear on the page like this, it should be in the body. Text appears here, is in the body. So pretty much, you know, all the real content of the web page is in the body, which, you know, makes sense, the body of the web page. What's in the head of the web page then? Sort of information about the page, all right? For example, uh, a page should have a title, all right? And that's done with a title tag. So I'm going to make my title Basic Winner Safety. And I'll save it, and then I'll view it in the browser. Notice what I'm doing here is I'm making my changes in the text editor. I'm saving it, and then I'm going to the browser and viewing it. So if you look, notice that the body of the page didn't change, right? Because the title is in the head section. So stuff in the head section, uh, stuff that you want to appear in the body of the page should be in the body tag. That, however, is a title. But where it does appear is it appears up here. All right, so notice the tab has the title of basic winter safety. And if I minimize this and I click that, the title will appear there, basic winter safety. All right. So every web page should have a title. All right. I would say this is sort of the minimal web page that you would have. These tags that I have here, not necessarily these tags, but these tags should be on every single web page that you do. The doc, the doc type, the head, I'm sorry, the doc type, the HTML tag, the head, and the body. It should be on every web page you do, along with the title. All right? And then you'll have stuff in the body, depending on the specific web page that you're working on. Now, notice that I said that things, tags can be contained within other tags. This is called nesting. Tags can nest in other tags. Now, if I do this, the idea of nesting is this, and I'll, I'll show you a, a good example and a bad example. If a tag starts in a tag, it should also end in a tag. So if a starting tag is inside, this starting tag is in within the head tag, right? It's be within, between the start and end head tag, all right? If a tag starts within a tag, it should also end within a tag. So this is a good example. I have my head tag, I have my start title, I have my end title, and then I have my end head. So that is what's called properly nested. All right, properly nested. Now, if I were to do this, and put that down there, that is not properly nested. Why? Because the title tag starts inside the head tag, but the end title tag ends outside of the head tag. So if, you're gonna, if you were drawing lines, like let's say you had a printout of this, if you drew lines, the lines would cross each other. All right? Because they're not properly nested. Now, what happens if you break the rules and is improperly nested? It depends. In a nutshell, all bets are off. It might work, it might not work. Let's see what happens here. We have an improperly nested. Has 
no effect whatsoever. All right. Pardon me? Oh, yeah. It, it messed up the title a little bit. Good, good call. Good eye. All right. So it did have a small effect. It didn't totally ruin your page, though. All right. That's the interesting thing and sometimes a frustrating thing about web development is your best bet for, for having your web page display the way you want it to is to follow all the rules of HTML. All right. If you break the rules of HTML, the consequences might be small or the consequences could be gigantic or somewhere in the middle. Let me show you an example of a small error causing a gigantic issue with a web page. Notice what happens if I forget, or let's say I don't even forget, let's say I misspell the end title tag. Alright? Small mistake, I typed an extra E. Alright? And let's put it back in place. Our web page completely disappeared. All right. We have a hint as to what happened if we look at the title. All right. Essentially what happened is we said the title started here. Because there is no end title tag, it assumes the rest of the page is part of the title. So the title starts here. We didn't end the title correctly, so it assumes everything after here is part of the title. And therefore, there's nothing to display on the page. So that's probably like the most dramatic example I can give of how a small mistake can have gigantic consequences. In other cases, it eh, might not be as big of a deal. Like, let's say I, I, I put the starting tag incorrect. I spelled the starting tag incorrectly. Has a small consequence, right? It doesn't have the title, but it shows the title here instead. It doesn't know what to do with it, so it just throws it up on the page. Browsers as software are very resilient. All right? Browsers do their best to display your web page the way that it thinks it should be displayed. All right? It's unlike other programming languages. How many of you have written programs in VB or C Sharp or things like that? In other programming languages, if you make a mistake, it just blows up. It just, the tiniest mistake will cause it not to do anything. Well, browsers are very resilient in that respect. They try to do the best that they can, and if they can't figure something out, they take a shot, all right? Hey, I don't know, you know, you misspelled the title tag. I don't know what to do with that. Okay, I'll just display it on the page, all right? So that's kind of the good news of the way browsers behave. That is a good news when you're talking about uh, backward compatibility because if uh, there's something the browser doesn't recognize, it just ignores it. So if you're running an old browser and the browser is looking at new code, it won't mess things up. Anyhow, your best bet is to follow the rules of HTML correctly, and then everything should display the way that you intended. Interesting thing, though, I said it should display the way that you intended. All right? Why isn't following the rules of the language 100% guaranteed that it will display exactly the way you intended? Any thoughts on that? Pardon me? Because of the uh, cascading spreadsheet? Because of the CSS, uh, possibly. There's lots of versions of browsers. And guess what? Humans wrote those browsers, so humans make mistakes. So this web page might look perfect in Chrome, but show up different in Microsoft Edge or Internet Explorer or Safari or whatever. And you have no idea, you know, you're kind of, uh, you know, kind of between a rock and a hard place there. You take your best shot and uh, you follow the rules and yet it still doesn't work out exactly the way it ought to. But guess what? It's your web page. You still have to deal with it and fix it.
We'll talk more about this as the semester progresses. The kind of web pages we're doing right now are simple enough that we shouldn't run into any of these issues. All right. This page, I would be pretty uh, surprised if it displayed any differently on any browser because it's so simple. We're not doing anything difficult or anything like that in it. So it should display the way that we would expect it to. All right, but let's just keep that in mind going forward. There actually is, and again, we'll touch on this later on, there actually is a program you can use to validate your web page to make sure you follow the rules. Um, if you go to the website of w3c.org, this is the organization that defines the web languages. All right? And there are, are programs that are validators that, right here, I'm going to validate by direct input. So I'm going to go and copy my code. and paste it and it only gave me one warning you know and think of warnings like uh, you know Warnings aren't like, is like when a police officer gives you a warning instead of a ticket, right? You know, uh, if it gives you an error, then there's a problem that you ought to fix. A warning is something you probably should pay attention to, too. And in this case, it says that I should have a language attribute to the HTML tag. So they're right. I should have lang equals en here because the language I'm using is English. Now it should go without any warnings or errors. One second. Yeah, no errors or warnings, yes. So for example, in our lab, uh, for the title, or we just put like article instead of the HTML, are we adding like the article to like, the title? Um, for your assignment, you should, for your title, you should pick something that, that describes what the page is. You know, think of, think of it as like, if this was an article in a magazine, what would the headline say? So, you know, it might be a uh, summary of CISS 216 languages would be a good example. It's not a requirement that you use the, the validator immediately, but it is a good practice to get into, all right? Uh, my only warning is sometimes the errors that it gives you are very confusing to read, all right? Because remember, this is a computer program, and therefore it's not going to say, hey, you spelled this word wrong. It's going to give you errors in something in a form that makes sense for it. Let me give you an example. If I were to, let's say, put, spell the word title wrong, it actually gives me a bunch of errors. It'd be nice if it just said, hey, you spelt title wrong, but it didn't. <coughs> it actually gives us five or six errors. It tells us, for example, that, hey, if you have a head tag, you also need a title tag, and we don't have because we spelled title wrong. It tells us, hey, I don't know what this tag means. Because it doesn't know what this means. All right, because we have one extra E. That doesn't seem quite right, but hey, that's the way these validators work. So if you run your page through a validator and you get a bunch of errors, don't panic because it might be one small thing that's causing a bunch of errors. And we can correct it simply by fixing that one thing. All 
Okay. Now, these are the tag, you know, the tags that I showed are sort of the skeleton of a web page, and every web page will have it. What we're going to go over now are, are other common tags that you'll find on web pages. Now, these tags are tags that are new to HTML5. The tags that we have up here now, for the most part, have been around for a long time in HTML, probably since the first version of HTML. But the tags that we're going to talk about now are new in HTML5. How many of you have done some HTML coding before? All right, handful of people. How many of you use the div tag? All right, you're not going to really use the div tag too much in this class. And the reason for it is because there are new and improved tags which take the place of div tags. All right, a div tag prior to HTML5 was meant to be a division of a page or a section of the page. Well, now there are specific tags that describe in a little more detail what the section was for. In HTML4, you'd have a div tag for the heading of the page. You have a div tag for the navigation. You have a div tag for the footer and so on. Now there are specific tags that take the place of those. And by using those tags, you really can simplify your code, make the code more descriptive, and really simplify the CSS. Make the CSS a lot cleaner and more simple. So in HTML5, and, and if you didn't do web development before that, just wipe the past two minutes out of your memory. All right, Don't pay attention to it. You don't have to worry about it. Most web pages have certain sections that are pretty standard that most other web pages have as well. So we can pick like any website that you want to. Pick LC's website. All right. There's sort of like a heading on the top of the thing that ident on the page that identifies what the page is about. So let's just randomly let's let's pick up ESPN too. <laughs> The inside story of the Cleveland Browns dysfunction. Boy, I picked a bad day to go to. I say, boy, I pick a bad day to go to this uh, this uh, site. All right. Notice there's a there's sort of a a heading that says, hey, what is this page? This is Lloyd Community College's page. You look at it. There's no doubt in your mind what that page is, right? You go to this site. Okay, this is ESPN's site. If we picked a dozen other sites, would find probably very similar sort of thing. There's also a navigation, sort of a main navigation that you have. Well, they got a main navigation over here, too. All right. There's something at the end that's like a footer. It's like at the bottom of the page. That's important stuff that you want to show, but it doesn't need to be in a prominent position. And I'll bet if we go to ESPN, we find the same thing. If I can reach the bottom. There we go. And sure enough, almost exactly the same thing. If you go from website to website, if you go to Amazon, you'd probably find the exact same thing. So there's a very common sort of pattern for web pages to follow. All right? And there are tags for each of these sections. And these tags were introduced in HTML5. So we're going to go over some of them today. All right? And... Uh, Maybe all of them, I don't know. But between today and next time, we'll go, over, we'll go over all of them. The first one is the heading tag. And the heading tag is meant for that banner sort of at the top of the page. Or, I'm sorry, not heading, header. My mistake. Header. That banner on top of the page that identifies what the page is about. So in this case, header, you know,
So when you go to this page, <coughs> when you go to this page, there's no question in your mind what this page is for. All right? You don't have to, like, sift through it and look and say, oh, what, what is this for? Who created this page? Is right there, sort of in your face. All right? That's a header. Second one that we're, we're not going to, we're not, well, we'll save, we'll save the nav tag for later on. I will either do it today or, or on Monday or Tuesday. The next one that we're going to have is an article. And an article is meant to be like an article that you'd find in a newspaper, an article that you'd find in um, a magazine or a um, on a web page or something like that. It, it's, it's something written about a particular topic. All right? So, some of this is judgment. And you know what? I really wouldn't worry about splitting hairs and agonizing. Like, you could tell me that this is one article, and I'd say, okay. Or you could tell me it's three articles, and I'd say, okay, all right. It's not like there's like rules that, oh my God, you, you made two articles and there should have been three or whatever. So we can go and we can do that. Just to demonstrate the way articles work, I'm going to put three articles in here just to show that. So we'll say I have a first article about shoveling. Second article about driving, and I have a third article about whatever the third article was about. Oh, your house pipes. an article, there's an article, there's an article. Just a small thing, the numbering for headers sort of starts over in each section, so these H2 should short, sort of become H1s. Because it's sort of the, it's the top level heading for this article. Then finally, we have a footer at the bottom. Maybe. And in there we can have a paragraph that says, you know, copyright Mike Zeller's 2019, something like that. Maybe I'd put my email address in there. You know, if you have any questions, contact Mike Zellers at this email address or my phone number or whatever. A lot of things you can do with that. Right for now, I just want to put these different sections in. Now, when we do this, this is how it's going to look. Here's the heading, header, rather. Here's my articles. And here's my footer. It doesn't have much of a visible impact right now. In other words, it doesn't look that much different than when there were no article tags in at all, or no header tags in at all. But, when we start putting CSS code in there, we have so much power and flexibility to make it look any way we want. We can, for example, put a border around all the articles. All right? We could make the header 
use a different set of colors instead of standard black uh, text on a white background we could uh, make it white text on a blue background or something like that all right so by itself this doesn't look impressive but we're putting ourselves in a position that when we start putting CSS on this page that we'll be able to have a lot of flexibility and be able to easily make it look any way that we want to. All right. So something like this would be a good example for your first homework assignment. If you just had the tags that are in here now, an article for each of the topics, I don't think I required it, but not much effort. You could add a header and a footer to it, a title, head and body section, HTML tag, doc type. Yes? Um, will you let us, since if we write like chapter one, there's like image tags and all that? Yeah, if, you, if you've done more, stuff. yeah. If okay. you've done more, that's always okay. Uh, as a general rule in this class, yeah, if you've done more, if you've done something that we haven't talked about in class or we haven't talked about it yet or whatever, that's, that's fine. Yeah, I'm not, not going to say, oh, I didn't say put an image on there or 10 off, you know. Uh, especially given it's only worth five points. That would be kind of mean to take 10 points off. <laughs> All right. Now, I do want to point something out that I haven't so far. Notice how the code looks. Notice that the HTML tag is here, the end tag is here, and the start tag and the end tag line up. Notice how the head tag is indented, and then the title tag is indented there. Notice how the body tag has all these tags indented inside of it. Notice how this paragraph is broken up between two lines, whereas another paragraph might not be. All right? Within your HTML document, there is, usually they call it white space, blank spaces. And blank spaces can either be like tabs or spaces or returns. Here's an interesting thing about HTML, and at first it sounds a little strange and a little goofy, but really the more that you get into it, you'll realize that this is, this is a blessing, this is a great thing is that any white space, the browser pretty much ignores. It converts any white space to a single space. So notice, for example, here, be sure to dress warm. I'll put in a couple extra blanks there. Don't overexert yourself. There's a bunch of space between warm and don't. But yet, when we view the page in the browser, there's only the one space. Here's what that means. That means that we can format our code in a way that makes the code more readable. All right? We could literally have all these tags on a single line. Our whole web page could be one line that went out a thousand characters wide. All right? And the, if we did our tags right, the browser would read it and display the page exactly how we intended it. However, if we came back in later and tried to change it, it would be very confusing for us, especially when we get into more complicated web pages with more tags and more nesting and so on. <coughs> this allows us to create a page and to format in a way that makes it easy for us to read, not easy for the browser to read. All right? And the reason for that is any kind of software development that you do, whether it be web development or conventional programming or mobile development or whatever, there's a good chance that at some point you're going to have to come back and maintain the program and make changes to it. And that really adds to the expense of a project. And anything you can do to make that job easier is a good thing. All right? And one of the things you can do with web pages to make them easier to change, easier to maintain, is to make the code readable to you. And what does that mean? Well, that means that you can format it whatever you think makes sense to you. And what I would recommend is doing like I did. 
using indenting to show the nesting. All right. At a glance, I can tell that this tag is inside of this tag, which is inside of this tag, which is inside this tag. By the way, the Notepad++ gives you the nice ability to sort of accordion these tags so that you can also see what's contained in what. So that's a nice feature of, of uh, Notepad++. But, again, by indenting and by formatting in a way that makes it easier for you to read, You'll make it easier for you or someone else to come back and change it. And that really cuts down on the cost of a project if you can go in and do it. So if you notice, uh, I'm not that neat of a person. All right? It's not like I'm one of those people that comes in in a perfect suit with my hair, you know, no hair out of place and all that. Yet my code, I try to make as neat as possible. <laughs> All right? It's the one aspect of my life <laughs> that there's order to, all right, is my code. I make it such that it's easy to read because I know from experience that I'm going to have to come back later and change it. And simply by spending that little extra effort when you first create it will save you so much time later on when you have to go back and maintain it. Any questions over anything that we have here? All right? Um, what do we do now for the rest of the semester? All right. Two main things. More tags and more CSS. The one thing that we sort of glossed over are attributes for tags. Attributes, notice this is a little bit, this tag looks different than the rest of them. We'll cover that next week when we talk about links and when we talk about images and when we talk about other tags, and then we'll probably get into CSS a bit next week as well. All right? So that's all I had for today. Um, I'll see you over in lab.